This will sound very strange, but it is predicted that on May 17th, 2023, Israel will bomb Iran's nuclear energy and weapons facilities. This prediction for May 17th is given to us through the most central prophecy in the Bible, which is the 77s prophecy in the book of Daniel in the Bible. Additionally, this prediction for May 17th is also provided to us from a historical parallel with the prophecy in the book of Daniel that begins with the Sultan of the Ottoman Empire, Suleiman the Magnificent, and his decree to rebuild the walls of Jerusalem in 1535. The post date for this video, the date that this video is posted, proves that this prediction was made ahead of time, and videos can't be edited once they are posted. As well, this time-stamped email and this forensic notes PDF prove that this prediction was made ahead of time. If you are skeptical for some reason, please email me and I will forward these to you. As we can see documented in this email, this prediction that Israel will bomb Iran on May 17th has been known since at least January 10th, 2023. Likewise, in this email, it is documented that it has been known that Israel will nuke Damascus, Syria on specifically May 20th, since at least January 10th, 2023. All right, what I am about to explain is one of the most amazing things ever. And what I'm about to explain in terms of prophecy is the foundation. This is the foundational prophecy that I'm about to explain. The most central prophecy in the Bible is the prophecy in Daniel chapter 9. This is the most central prophecy in Christianity. This is the prophecy in which the archangel Gabriel came to Daniel and gave him a prophecy that is known as the 70 weeks prophecy. In Hebrew, there is a word that means a unit of seven. In English, we have the word a couple, which means or refers to a couple of things, two things. Arguably, a few refers to three, several. It's rooted in the word seven. But in Hebrew, they have a specific word that means specifically a unit of seven, which is the word shibua. And this word shibua is the word that is translated into weeks. And so this prophecy that is about 70 weeks isn't, in fact, about literally 70 times 7 days. It li literally means 70 a unit of 7. And we know from this prophecy that it is referring to 7 years. In other words, 70 weeks is referring to 70 sets of 7 years. And I will not go into the details of this prophecy and explain every detail of it. But it is explained in the video series that I first made in 2017. I made a five video series, which I originally only ever intended to make five videos. And I didn't intend to have a video ministry. I had just intended to make these five videos. And in these five videos, I explain in detail how or what the 70 weeks prophecy is all about. Make sure that you watch this five video series that I titled Most Astounding Information Ever. Make sure you look for and find and watch these videos. Jesus arrived literally exactly to the day as explained from this decree to rebuild Jerusalem that's recorded in Nehemiah chapter 2. The prophecy in Daniel chapter 9 refers to a decree to rebuild Jerusalem and its walls. And there is only one such decree in the Bible, and it has a specific date, in fact, as well. And then when we add the exact 69 times 7 years, biblical years, which is a 12-month period of 30 days each, we get exactly the date of Jesus' triumphal entry in 32 AD. And so this was a fulfillment because the prophecy speaks of Jesus' Jesus's arrival and then this Messiah, it's because it's re referred to as the Messiah in Hebrew, the Messiah will be put to death. It says that straightforwardly in this Daniel chapter 9 prophecy, 
which is one reason why it is a complete mystery how the Jews don't recognize that Jesus is the Messiah, because it clearly says that when the Messiah ar arrives, he will be put to death. But then again, the Apostle Paul speaks of the quote-unquote mystery of the blindness of the Jews. And it is truly a mystery, but had the Jews not rejected Jesus, it wouldn't have forced the gospel to go around the world and give the whole world the opportunity to learn about the true God, the God of Israel, and the gospel of Jesus. And Jesus said he wouldn't return until the gospel had gone around the world. And now that it has, even the remote tribes in the Amazon have heard the gospel. The age can't finish until the Jews also have their opportunity to receive Jesus, which is what occurs at the end of the age at the second coming of Lord Jesus Christ. But anyway, this 70 weeks prophecy is broken into a period of 69 weeks followed by the last 70th set of seven years, the 70th week. All right. And so the uh, Messiah will arrive at the end of 69 weeks. And then there, as the prophecy says, there will be this pause in between the 69th week and the 70th week. That's written clearly in the text. And that pause is referred to as a period of desolations. And that is what happened to Israel after the Messiah was crucified. The Romans came and destroyed Israel and Jerusalem. And then the land was laid desolate and the rain stopped. And there was this 2,000 years of pause in the prophecy before the prophecy is to resume for the final 70th week. And that final 70th week was symbolically begun, as I will explain, in 2017, the final symbolic seven years. And the event that, was, that symbolizes this symbolic beginning of the final seven years was the day that the Jews were able to pray on the Temple Mount for the first time openly, because prior to that, it was illegal to do so. One, a Jew, if they were allowed to be on the Temple Mount, was not even permitted to say a prayer before drinking some, some of their water. So anyway, that first day of Jews openly able to pray on the Temple Mount was extremely significant. It followed terrorism on the Temple Mount a few days earlier. There was a big dramatic buildup and then which climaxed into terrorism on the Temple Mount on July 14th, 2017. And then because of that, because of the security situation on the Temple Mount, Jews were on the Temple Mount and openly praying. And that was on July 17th, 2017. And that date was exactly 49 biblical years, a prophetic biblical year, again, is 12 months of 30 days each, 360 days. And that day, July 17th, 2017, was exactly 49 years, in other words, seven weeks, in the prophecy, according to the prophecy, a week is, as I explained, seven years. And so 49 years is seven weeks. And so it was exactly seven weeks, if you will, after the Israeli Knesset decreed that Jerusalem be rebuilt. East Jerusalem, what is called the Old City. The decree was to rebuild Jerusalem, and this was on April 1st, 1969, and this was shortly after the Jews recaptured East Jerusalem and the Temple Mount, taking possession of this land, this territory, this Temple Mount and East Jerusalem, the old city, for the first time in 19 centuries. Prior to that, they didn't have East Jerusalem. This was before the Six-Day War in 1967, which led to, in 1969 on April 1st, this decree to rebuild Jerusalem. Okay, and that paralleled the decree in Nehemiah chapter 2 regarding the rebuilding of Jerusalem and its walls after the Jews were exiled to Babylon. This was the decree 
that was given in Nehemiah chapter 2 in the book of Nehemiah. And this guy, Nehemiah, is involved with rebuilding Jerusalem. That decree was given by King Artaxerxes, the king of Persia at the time. And so, like I was saying, we had 69 biblical weeks, in other words, 69 times 7 years, 483 years, but biblical years, 360 days. And if we add that exact number of days, which is 173,880 days, we get exactly the day that Jesus officially arrived into Jerusalem on riding on a donkey in his triumphal entry. If you want to know the dates, the date of the decree, according to the Royal British Observatory, was March 14th, 445 BC. And Jesus' arrival into Jerusalem was on path, the Sunday before Passover, according to the Royal British Observatory, in 32 AD, which was April 8th, 32 AD. And 173,880 days earlier was the decree. It's an exact match. In other words, it's amazing proof that the Bible is the inspired word of God. I explained this much better in the other video that I mentioned. But the reason for going into this is to demonstrate something very, very important here regarding this prediction that Israel will bomb Iran on May 17th, 2023, which is tomorrow. And May 17th, 2023 is exactly 70 months after July 17th, 2017. A couple more things to speak about uh, regarding this July 17th, 2017 date, the date that the Jews were able to pray on the Temple Mount openly for the first time. So the 69 weeks in between Artaxerxes' decree and the arrival of the Messiah is broken into, in the prophecy, it's broken into a period of 62 weeks and 7 weeks for a total of 69 weeks. This is a parallel with 1969. On April 1st, 1969 was the day that the Israeli Knesset decreed to rebuild Jerusalem, which is again a parallel with the decree to rebuild Jerusalem and its walls in 445 BC. That decree in 1969 to rebuild Jerusalem is 62 weeks, 62 times 7 years, 434 years after the decree of Suleiman the Magnificent. Suleiman the Magnificent in 1535 decreed that Jerusalem and its walls be rebuilt which was a parallel with the decree from Artaxerxes, the king of Ar King Artaxerxes, his decree to rebuild Jerusalem and its walls. And when we add 69 weeks from the decree from Suleiman the Magnificent's decree in 1535, we get, or, or, or rather, I'm jumping ahead, if we add 62 weeks, we get the decree in 1969, but if we add another seven biblical weeks, in other words, 49 biblical years, we get July 17th, 2017. And so, from Suleiman the Magnificent's decree to rebuild Jerusalem and its walls, we have a parallel. We have 69 weeks to the Temple Mount event that I am speaking about when Jews were able to pray openly on the Temple Mount, and this 69 weeks is broken into a period of 62 weeks and 7 weeks. In other words, 62 times 7 years and 7 times 7 years. And that middle date in which this 69 years is broken down into lands on April 1st, 1969, when the Israeli Knesset decreed to rebuild Jerusalem. And so this 69 weeks period between 1535 and Suleiman the Magnificent's decree regarding Jerusalem and July 17, 2017 is a direct parallel with the 69 times 7 years period between 
King Artaxerxes' decree and Jesus' official arrival into Jerusalem in 32 AD. All right, now, as I mentioned, the 70th week st still remains in this prophecy. And in the prophecy, again, there is a pause of 2,000 years after Jesus' arrival, the Messiah's arrival in Daniel chapter 9. And by the way, if you don't know, Daniel chapter 9, the book of Daniel was written 700 years before Jesus. And so, but there's a 70th week remaining, which is seven years, one period of seven years, one week. And it is a symbolic week. And that, what I am getting at here, why this is so important is that this event in July of 2017 on the 17th was a symbolic beginning, one of a number of symbolic beginnings, but it was a very, very significant symbolic beginning of the final seven years. There are many reasons why this is the case. And for example, there are many reasons why 2017 was important. The first year of Trump, God's trumpet that he uses to trumpet and highlight his prophetic signs, the beginning of Trump's presidency, for example. And Trump, what he did most prophetically of all was done in 2017, which was, which was how and when he decreed that Jerusalem is the capital of Israel. And then the U.S. Embassy was officially opened on the 70th anniversary of the rebirth of Israel on May 14th, 2018. And the day that Trump decreed that Jerusalem is the capital of Israel and moved the U.S. Embassy to Jerusalem was exactly in the Hebrew calendar. It was exactly the 70th anniversary. It was exactly 70 years after the United Nations partition plan for Palestine, which officially recognized a Jewish state in 1947. In other words, this 70 weeks prophecy is being fulfilled and the final 70th week symbolically began on the 17th day of the seventh month in 2017 and exactly 70 months after July 17th, 2017, is May 17th, 2023, the date it is predicted that Israel will bomb Iran, which will directly lead to the Jews rebuilding the temple on the Temple Mount. Because it is also predicted that bombing Iran will lead to the dropping of a nuclear bomb on Damascus, which will fulfill the prophecy in Isaiah chapter 17. And this will lead to chaos in the region, but also Jews rebuilding the Temple Mount. That's the huge significance here. And so, in other words, this 70 months exact connection between July 17th, 2017 and May 17th, 2023 is a massive confirmation for this prediction that tomorrow on May 17th, Israel will bomb Iran. This symbolic seven years that began in 2017, and there are again, a number of symbolic beginnings. This is one of them. And the reason is, is because the seven years is only symbolic. There are people that know some things about Bible prophecy and believe that, we, that the seven years is literal, but it is only symbolic. In fact, there is no mention of seven years in Bible prophecy. But, but by the way, I didn't make this clear enough yet. This 70th week in Daniel chapter 9, this final period of a symbolic seven years, this period is described in the prophecy as being the end times period. It doesn't actually say end times, but it's clear from the prophecy. It's the last verse of the chapter nine. It's regarding the 70th week and it mentions the Antichrist and his role in the end times. It's the end times period. Now, while I'm on the subject of this last verse of Daniel chapter nine, this 27th verse in this most central prophecy in the Bible, 
the most important prophecy in Christianity. This, again, this last uh, verse regards the final 70th week. It's described right here, the one week. Or yes, I think this is a good idea. The subject of this video is this prophecy. It is a good idea to read the short prophecy here. So it begins with, it's the 77s. And here is an example of how it isn't translated as weeks. This is the NIV translation, the New International Version translation. And they correctly translate it. Well, not correctly. It's not the correct way to say that. But, you know, it's more appropriately translated as sevens because, again, the word is Shubua and it means simply a unit of seven. It does not mean a seven days period like in seven days of a week. So in this first paragraph, Daniel describes how Gabriel came to visit him while he was praying. And so here in the 24th verse, 70 sevens are decreed for your people and your holy city to finish transgression, to put an end to sin, to atone for wickedness, to bring in everlasting righteousness, to seal up vision and prophecy, and to anoint the most holy place. So clearly we are talking about the Messiah. This isn't anyone else except this is written 700 years before Jesus. And if you don't believe that, you're incorrect about history. There are manuscripts that go back regarding the book of Daniel long before Jesus, including, for example, the Dead Sea Scrolls. All right, this wasn't quote unquote changed. If you are for perhaps by chance a Muslim or you are a New Ager and you have been lied to about that sort of thing. So, uh, and but it's talking about this Messiah as putting an end to sin and atoning for wickedness. And so therefore, this is clearly talking about the Christian Messiah because the Jews aren't expecting this kind of Messiah. This is a Christian Messiah and let's continue. Know and understand this. From the time the word goes out to restore and rebuild Jerusalem until the anointed one, which is the Messiah, in Greek is Christ, the ruler comes, there will be seven sevens and 62 sevens for a total of 69 sevens. It will be rebuilt with streets and a trench, but in a times of trouble. After the 62 sevens, the anointed one or the Christ will be put to death and will have nothing. Well, this is fascinating because, again, this was written many centuries before Jesus. And it is clearly saying right here that this Messiah, when he arrives, the anointed one, the Christ, when he arrives, he will be put to death and will have nothing. But how can that be? Because, of course, Jews don't believe that Jesus was the Messiah and they're certainly not expecting their Messiah to be put to death when he arrives. But this is clearly in their text, which is why Jewish rabbis forbid Jews from reading this chapter. It's called the forbidden chapter. Well, it's, no, sorry, I'm incorrect there. They also forbid them from reading Isaiah chapter 53. I'm, mis I'm mistaken. I got confused there. That is the quote unquote forbidden chapter, which is also clearly describing the Christian Messiah. But let's continue. After the 62 sevens, the, he will be put to death and will have nothing. Okay, and then it says this, the people of the ruler who will come. Okay, the people of the ruler who will come, this is in the future, will destroy the city and the sanctuary. The end will come like a flood, war will continue until the end, and desolations have been decreed. Now this desolations have been decreed, as I was mentioning, is the 2,000 years of pause in this prophecy between the 69th week and the 70th week. But this desolations have been decreed also is a parallel with Deuteronomy chapter 28, which talks about how when the Jews disobey in the future, God is speaking to the Jews before they enter the promised land, when they will eventually reject him, he will chase them around the world from nation to nation, which is exactly how history unfolded. And he, in this prophecy, said that the rain would stop, which is exactly what happened. In fact, scientists in the caves in Israel, from the stalactites, they can determine the rain levels in history of Israel. And the rain stopped around the second half of the first century, around the time of the 
destruction of the second temple in 70 AD, shortly after they crucified Jesus. And then the rains started coming back in the late 1800s as the Jews started coming back to Israel. And it was and more rain into the um, 20th century. And in fact, the two record years of rain in Israel were 1948 and 1967, the two years of Israel's rebirth, the two most important years in modern Israel history. Those were the record years of rain in Israel. And so anyway, my point here is that that prophecy in Deuteronomy is talking about this period of desolation. And it also, by the way, talks about this, the witness, the stranger from the faraway land will come and be the witness to the desolation. And that was fulfilled by Mark Twain. In his first book that made him famous was it was a record of his travels. It was his writings of his travels, including his time in Israel. And in the book, he wrote that this land is so desolate that God must have cursed this land, which is exactly how it is described in Deuteronomy, that God would make the land desolate. And um, Mark Twain even wrote details regarding the trees and the grass, which completely parallel and match the prophecy in Deuteronomy. It's uncanny. And so Mark Twain was the witness, the stranger from the faraway land. Mark Twain is famous for not being a believer in God, hence more reason why he's a stranger. But he also came from San Francisco, and this was before the age of airplanes and the railroad. And so he would have had to travel around the Americas, and he couldn't have become from a further Oh, he couldn't have come from further away, the other side of North America to Israel. And so he was the stranger from the faraway land that fulfilled this prophecy. But my point in going off into that a little bit is to confirm for you a little bit the parallel with and why this desolations have been decreed is in fact a period of pause in this prophecy because it aligns with other very important prophecy regarding Israel and, and this, this prophecy is about Israel as it begins with, as it says, it's about the Jewish people. Uh, uh, 77s are decreed for your people, speaking to Daniel, a Jew, in Babylon at the time. All right, and then after this description of this desolations have been decreed is this final period of seven years, the final 70th seven, and it regards the Antichrist, the ruler who will come. And the, and the temple, the temple on the Temple Mount, right? And the abomination that causes desolations until the end when judgment is determined and poured out on Judgment Day. So uh, this uh, description of this he that will confirm a covenant, he's talking about the ruler who will come, which is in the verse prior to this, as I said, the people of the ruler who will come will destroy the city and the sanctuary. Well, after the Messiah was put to death, it was the Romans that destroyed the city and the sanctuary. And here it is saying that this ruler who will come is of the people that destroyed the city and the sanctuary. In other words, this ruler who will come is a Roman and he's the ruler of Romans. In history, emperors became popes. In fact, the first pope was also an emperor. And so popes are descendants of emperors. And this is, in fact, one of many, many very, very clear, indisputable ways in which we can know for sure that the first Antichrist described in Revelation chapter 13 is the pope. And all popes throughout all of history have been Antichrists because Roman Catholicism isn't a legitimate denomination of Christianity. It is Antichrist. It is paganism wrapped in the wrapper of Christianity to make it appear like Christianity, but it has nothing to do with the Bible. None of it is in the Bible. It is man-made religion on top of the Bible, which Catholics claim to have the authority to do through popes. And that's why the office of the papacy is blasphemy and is Antichrist. And furthermore, we know from Bible prophecy that the Antichrist, the first one, is first apostate and only then from this position of apostasy, political. 
And that was the case throughout most of history until Napoleon ended that. But this will become the case again in the final period when the Pope also not only has religious authority over supposedly all of Christendom, but temporal powers. That's what's coming. It's a revival of the rule from Rome of the world, which is also described in Bible prophecy. It's mystery Babylon. It's also said that this beast, which is a metaphor for the Antichrist, his mortal wound will be healed. That mortal head wound was wounded. His head was wounded with Napoleon when his general stripped the papacy of its temporal powers. But that it says in the prophecy that this beast will recover from that wound and the whole world will be enamored with this, which will be the case when, again, Rome is the center of the Western world, which is coming very soon. But anyway, the point is, is that for conservative Catholics that claim that this pope is so bad, but it, it's just Pope Francis, no, that's incorrect. Catholicism is bad. It is rotten. It isn't Christianity. All popes throughout all of history have been antichrists. But anyway, my point here is, again, that this passage completely confirms this. This antichrist that's described in the 27th verse is the ruler who will come that is of the Romans that destroyed the city and the sanctuary in 70 AD. And there are many other examples. It also says, for example, in the previous chapter, in Daniel chapter 8, that the Antichrist will come from the north and the west. Well, exactly due northwest from Jerusalem is Rome. And that's just one of many, many passages. So, in fact, anyone that says that the Pope isn't the Antichrist doesn't understand prophecy very well. And those that continue to play the guessing game of, you know, candidates for the Antichrist, I'm, I'm, you know, no, it, I'm sorry, but it's really an incorrect, uh, a poor understanding of Bible prophecy. There's so many prophecies that make it so very clear that the Vatican and Rome is the Antichrist. And many, many people have a misunderstanding regarding 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, which they interpret to mean that it isn't possible to know the identity of the Antichrist until... I don't even know what you know, the rapture or when he steps foot on the Temple Mount or something. But uh, none of that is correct. Uh, what Paul is talking about there, he's talking, it's not the Holy Spirit. He's talking about a he and a what. He refers to what is restraining the Antichrist from coming to power is as a he and a what. Well, why did he refer to it as a he and a what if it's the Holy Spirit? And why, furthermore, did he speak cryptically? Because he told the Thessalonians in that same passage that they knew what he was talking about. So why say that like that cryptically? Well, the reason was is because he was protecting them because had anyone been in possession of this letter that was talking about the leader of Rome being the Antichrist, they would have been in trouble. And so that's why he wrote cryptically like that and referred to it as a he and a what. And what he's referring to as being the he and the what that is removed is when Constantine in history moved the capital of the Roman Empire to Constantinople, thus allowing the bishops of Rome to rise and assert their power and eventually become popes. That's exactly what he's talking about, the he and the what. It's the Roman Empire and Caesar being removed, allowing the the uh, the bishops to assert their power. But th that isn't the subject of this video, and I've gone on too long now. I just wanted to demonstrate this and go into the uh, Daniel uh, chapter 9 prophecy a little bit. But again, it is only symbolic, and there are many, many reasons for knowing this. And this prediction being made in this video will prove this. This is the purpose for this prediction. Make no mistake, the reason why God has given me a voice through this prediction is to prove that the second coming of Lord Jesus Christ is seven years later in 2024 on the Day of Atonement on October 12th, 2024. The evidence for this through God's big picture of signs, which 
this prediction will prove to be true and which is only being explained on this channel, there is a ma in this big picture of signs, there is a mountain of evidence higher than Mount Everest that confirms that the second coming is in 2024 on the Day of Atonement, Judgment Day. But the prediction being made in this video will prove all of this, and that's the purpose of this. And so that's also what I'm saying here too, is that this 70 months connection to tomorrow, May 17th, is part of this confirmation evidence proof process that God is demonstrating that the symbolic 70th week, the final seven years, began in 2017. Now, another thing too, regarding this July 17th, 2017 date, more confirmation of the prophetic significance of this. God arranged this truly profound um, earthquake tetrad. Some people that follow God's prophetic signs are familiar with this earthquake tetrad that occurred. And so let me just try to briefly explain it here. There, if you may know, there is also a blood moon tetrad. A blood moon is a lunar eclipse and four blood moon lunar eclipses in a row that all coincide with Jewish feast dates. There are seven feasts in the Jewish Hebrew calendar every year. There are, when these four in a row occur on Jewish feast dates with no lunar eclipses in between them, this is a uh, blood moon tetrad, a unit of four blood moons. And if I recall, in the last 2000 years, there have only been eight of these or something like that. And the last few, I can tell you I, the reasons why they are prophetic and no doubt the other ones are too. But uh, that's not the purpose of this video to talk about blood moon tetrads. But the point about blood moon tetrads is that the blood moons are spaced by 177 days in between the blood moons. And, and so there was an earthquake tetrad, which these earthquakes that were 7.0 or greater were spaced by 177 days with no other 7.0 or greater earthquakes in between them. It was an earthquake tetrad. And seven being the number of God's signature indicating his divine touch upon something, right? There are, for example, seven continents, seven colors in a rainbow, seven notes in a musical scale, seven tables uh, in the periodic, seven levels in the periodic table of elements, seven metals of antiquity on which civilization is based, seven objects in the night sky that are visible to the naked eye that move across the night sky, all right, um, and on and on. So anyway, the number seven here is in this 70 weeks prophecy as well. So we have this earthquake tetrad of earthquakes 7.0 or greater that are spaced the same number of days as blood moon tetrads. And the third one was the big one, the big prophetic one, if you will. And there are other reasons why the others are prophetic too, and that's not the subject of this video. But this middle one, this third one, was occurred on July 17th, 2017. And it, so in other words, it coincided with this extremely prophetic date of the Jews being able to openly pray on the Temple Mount for the first time exactly 49 biblical years after the decree to rebuild Jerusalem, which, as I just explained, parallels the, the, the 70 weeks prophecy in Daniel chapter 9. And again, indicates a symbolic beginning of the 70th week that symbolically began in 2017. And one of the symbolic beginnings was this July 17th date in 2017, this beginning of the final 70th week of seven years. And here we have this 7.0 or greater earthquake. The magnitude of this one, this earthquake, was 7.7, .7, in fact. And 
It was 6.9 miles deep, which hinted at 69 weeks. Because, as I just explained, this event on July 17, 2017, was a completion of a symbolic 69 times 7 years from Suleiman the Magnificent's decree to rebuild Jerusalem and its walls in 1535. And that's why this earthquake was 6.9 miles deep and was 7.7 .7 in magnitude. But not only this, um, the earthquake was 11.0 kilometers deep, which hints at 110. And God uses frequently the number 110 to symbolize Joshua, who in the Bible died at the age of 110. Joshua led the Hebrews around the walls of security of the ancient city of Jericho before they collapsed in God's judgment. When the Jews took, or when the Hebrews took the promised land in the book of Joshua. And archaeology proves that the walls of ancient Jericho collapsed due to an earthquake. And so Joshua is also earthquake symbolism. And that's why this earthquake was 11.0 kilometers deep. But the earthquake tetrad ended on the date 110 in 2018, July 10th. And that date hinted at Joshua and earthquake symbolism. And that was the date that the earthquake tetrad ended on, which was amazing confirmation. Now, that date in itself was 110 days after the fulfillment of the Revelation chapter 12 sign, which is another subject. But the point is, is that 110 symbolizes Joshua. But why does 110 symbolize Joshua? Or, or rather, if you will, why is it that God made it that Joshua died on the date uh, at the age of 110? It's the reason for that is that the Hebrews entered the promised land on the date Nisan 10, the 10th day of the first month, which is when the earthquake tetrad ended on the 10th day of the first month in 2018. And Jesus' arrival into Jerusalem on a donkey, which is described in the Daniel chapter 9 prophecy, was also on Nisan 10. And that's because the Hebrews entered the promised land on Nisan 10, the 10th day of the seventh month. And so Jesus' so Jesus's arrival is symbolized by the number 110. Okay, and so that's also why this earthquake tetrad ends on the date 110. This is also why, by the way, on 9-11, uh, 110 stories of the Twin Towers collapsed because it hinted at the collapse of the walls of security in ancient Jericho and through the 9-11 events, God was communicating judgment and collapse of security for America. And the reason why it was two buildings that were 110 stories is that that is symbolic of the second coming because 110 is symbolic of the first coming, as I just explained. Jesus' triumphal entry on the date 110. Two times that, two towers of 110 stories is symbolic of the second coming. All right, so this video has explained the 70 weeks prophecy and how it ties into this prediction that Israel will bomb Iran on May 17th, exactly 70 months after this key event in the 70 weeks prophecy, which occurred on July 17th, 2017, which made it, that date, a symbolic beginning of the final period of seven years, the 70th week. Well, what I'm going to do now is just play a clip from a video that I made way back in 2019. Just a clip, and it explains another symbolic beginning of the final seven years, but it explains it through this same 70 weeks parallel with Suleiman the Magnificent and the decree in the Knesset in Israel in 1969. This same parallel also demonstrates another symbolic beginning for the 70th week, the final seven year period, beginning on April 1st, 2018, because that date was exactly 49 years. The July 17th, 2017 date was 49 biblical years, a prophetic 
Bible year, prophetic years in the Bible, again, are 12 months of 30 days each. But April 1st, 2018 was exactly 49 calendar years, solar years. And so this is very interesting too. So I might as well just play this clip that I made back in 2019 explaining this. After the Hebrews crossed over the Jordan River. In recent videos, I have explained the importance of signs involving walls falling and national symbolism. I won't explain this again here. And if you find this or other videos interesting, then I recommend treating the videos on this channel like a college class and watching each video on this channel. A most amazing video that explains this walls falling national symbolism concept is the last video, which is the 20 signs in May video explaining what really happened in May. On April 1st, a wall collapsed on Washington Street in the old section of Sonora, California, like the wall in Washington's Mount Vernon estate and the Jerusalem security wall, this wall fell due to unusually heavy rains. It was a historic building and the collapse of the wall was a surprise to those involved because of the quote, stacked rock style of construction quote, that is quote, known to date back to the days of the gold rush in the 1850s quote. The quotes I mentioned are from an online news article on this story. With this rock wall, we have Jesus symbolism. As was explained in video number three of the Pentecost series, the rock that fell from the Western Wall on the 9th of Av symbolizes Jesus. Therefore, in this sign, we have more rock and wall symbolism, and therefore, Jesus and national judgment symbolism. The number 333 symbolizes Jesus, and what confirms this analysis is that 333 days after this historic rock wall fell is the day the Jerusalem security wall fell on February 27th, which is another massive wall falling sign. The number 110 symbolizes Joshua and the Jerusalem security wall falling sign connects with 110 days to Pentecost on June 16th, which is the end of the 2019 Joshua parallel when the walls of Jericho fall. In other words, in the 2018 Joshua parallel, this rock wall sign that symbolizes Jesus and judgment connects with 333 days, a number that symbolizes Jesus, to the Jerusalem security wall falling judgment sign. The Jerusalem security wall falling sign, in turn, connects to the end of the 2019 Joshua parallel with 110 days, a number that symbolizes Joshua and earthquake judgment. In other words, the 2018 Joshua parallel directly connects to the end of the 2019 Joshua parallel with most profound Joshua walls falling in Jesus symbolism as well. The date this historic stacked rock wall on Washington Street in California fell was the 49th anniversary of the decree to rebuild Jerusalem in 1969. And this wall's construction style dates back to the gold rush in 1849. The San Francisco 49ers football team name is derived from the gold rush in 1849. April 1st was the 49th anniversary of the decree to rebuild Jerusalem, and 49 years is seven times seven years. The decree to rebuild Jerusalem in 1969 came after 62 times seven years from Suleiman the Magnificent's decree to rebuild the walls of Jerusalem in 1535. 62 times 7 years and 7 times 7 years are the lengths of time given by Archangel Gabriel in Daniel chapter 9 for the period of time until the arrival of the Messiah after a total of 69 times 7 years. In other words, the period of 69 times 7 years from Suleiman the Magnificent's decree to rebuild the walls 
of Jerusalem until April 1st, 2018, parallels the 69 times 7 years from the decree to rebuild the walls of Jerusalem recorded in the book of Nehemiah chapter 2 until the arrival of the Messiah. This parallel in itself is absolutely stunning. However, this parallel is also in the context of this other parallel of signs coinciding with the timing of events in the book of Joshua. In other words, the parallel of signs in 2018 we are studying here overlaps a parallel dating back to 1535 and Suleiman the Magnificent's decree to rebuild the walls of Jerusalem, which in turn parallels the first coming of Jesus Christ and the decree to rebuild the walls of Jerusalem in 445 BC. Think about this for a minute and let the magnitude of this sink in. This stacked rock wall on Washington Street is a massive sign that connects with the first coming of Jesus Christ. This stacked rock wall sign on April 1st, 2018, at the end of the parallel from Suleiman the Magnificent's decree to rebuild the walls of Jerusalem, is signaling the second coming of Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus arrived after 69 times 7 years from the decree in the book of Nehemiah to rebuild the walls of Jerusalem, and this stacked rock wall falling sign comes 69 times 7 years after Suleiman the Magnificent's decree to rebuild the walls of Jerusalem. Brothers and sisters, I hope you are appreciating how significant this sign is. There certainly are no words to describe how amazing this is. This sign is even more beyond words astounding. The 24 signs in February video explained the most massive second coming sign that was the unsealing of the Eastern Gate. If you haven't watched this video, I suggest watching it right away. Days of Temple Mount riots over the Golden Gate compound on the Temple Mount climaxed on February 22nd, or 2.22. It has been explained in prior videos how a series of twos symbolizes the end times. There are 22 chapters in the book of Revelation, and the last letter in the Hebrew alphabet is the Tav, and it is the 22nd letter. In Paleo-Hebrew, the Tav was a cross, and the Tav mark symbolizes Jesus. Jesus said he is the Alpha and the Omega, or rather, the Aleph and the Tav. Brothers and sisters, it has occurred to me an even deeper reason why a series of twos symbolizes the end times. A series of twos symbolizes the second coming. The Aleph and the Tav symbolize the first and second comings. On February 22nd, the Israeli Moonlander probe was launched, and as the Israeli Moonlander video on this channel explained, this Israeli Moonlander was a massive second coming sign. This is a must-watch video, and it is the only place that explains the true purpose of this sign. On February 22nd, Arab Muslims crashed open the gate to the compound that is directly across the hall from the gate that Lord Jesus Christ will enter through in the second coming. The gate that Jesus will pass through was sealed with rock by Suleiman the Magnificent in 1535. The stacked rock wall that fell on April 1st, 2018 was 327 days before the unsealing of the Eastern Gate sign on February 22nd. G327 is the word for to seek out, search through, make diligent search. The Lord has used this number to encourage us in his signs before. This connection is such a deep and amazing confirmation. The historic stacked rock wall that fell exactly at the end of the 69 times 7 years from when Suleiman sealed the eastern gate came 327 days before the unsealing of the Eastern Gate sign. 
In other words, the crumbling of this historic stacked rock wall is symbolizing the unsealing of the Eastern Gate Wall. In other words, this stacked rock wall sign truly is a second coming sign. And in other words, this is shocking and our jaws are probably dropped at this point. Also, the Lord is using the concept of parallel in itself as symbolism. He is using the 69 times 7 years parallel to point to this Joshua parallel we are studying in this video. The end of this 69 times 7 years parallel with Suleiman the Magnificent's decree and the decree in the Israeli Knesset in 1969 connects with this parallel with the book of Joshua. What is also amazing, though, is that April 1st, 2018 was the 49th anniversary of the decree in 1969. Adding further interest to this connection is that the 62 weeks and 7 weeks are described in Daniel chapter 9 to start from a decree to rebuild the walls of Jerusalem. And April 1st, when the wall fell, was the 49th, or 7 times 7 years, anniversary of the decree in the Israeli Knesset to rebuild Jerusalem. If all of the numbers in the last couple of paragraphs were a little much, don't worry about it. George Washington was appointed to Commander-in-Chief of the Continental Army in 1775. 1775 days prior to this historic wall falling on Washington Street in California was the day a bridge on Interstate 5 collapsed. The bridge spans the Skagit River and connects the city of Mount Vernon in Washington State. The bridge is known as the Mount Vernon Bridge. Prior videos have spoken about the massive sign that was the collapse of the retaining wall in Washington's Mount Vernon estate. Bridges are symbolic of Christ as the mediator between us and God. It was the Bay Bridge that symbolically collapsed in the 1989 World Series earthquake sign. I will be speaking more about the Mount Vernon Bridge as well as other similar truly amazing National Judgment signs in upcoming videos. This connection of 1775 days from the day the stacked rock wall fell on Washington Street to the day the Interstate 5 Mount Vernon Bridge in Washington State collapsed is truly astounding and it is amazing confirmation of each of these signs. There was another amazing sign on April 1st. This stacked rock wall style of construction for this wall dates back to the California Gold Rush in 1849. The NFL football team in nearby San Francisco is named the 49ers, and the name is derived from this Gold Rush history. Pope Francis is the first beast Antichrist, and he took the name Francis, which is the same person the city of San Francisco is named after. On April 1st, we received a massive Antichrist sign. April 1st was Easter Sunday, and it was also April Fool's Day. April Fool's Day is a Catholic tradition, and because it fell on the same day as Easter, the Pope decided to use his power to cancel April Fool's Day in 2018 and instead have two April Fool's Days in 2019. Pope Francis used the power to change a date that a pope had not used in four to five hundred years. This use of power to change the date points to verse 25 in Daniel chapter 7 that regards the Antichrist. He shall think to change the times and the law. What confirms this as a sign revealing the pope is the first beast Antichrist is that 6,666 days before April 1st was New Year's Eve in 1999. This was the day of the Y2K Doomsday, 
which was all about the changing of the date. The day the Pope changed the date connects with 6,666 days to the doomsday that regarded changing a date. This is absolutely stunning. However, what now makes this even more stunning is that April 1st was also the day of the stacked rock wall that dates back to 1849, which connects to the 49ers football team that play in the city named after Francis, the same guy the Pope is named after. In summary, regarding this historic stacked rock wall that fell on Washington Street on April 1st, 2018, this was a stunning and very important sign that parallels events in the book of Joshua. Walls falling symbolize Joshua and judgment. Aliens and UFOs are demons masquerading as aliens and UFOs. Most people's spiritual experiences are demonic deception, especially if they are not a true follower of Christ. Jesus died for you. It is time to repent, which means to change one's ways and turn to God and become a disciple of Jesus. Please leave a like and upvote the video. And once this prediction has come to pass, share this video with everyone you know and more. Don't stop sharing it everywhere in social media. It is essential that everyone immediately read the homepage of my website, trumpprediction.com.